Johnson Controls, the powerhouse conglomerate that makes everything from automobile seating and interiors to batteries for all sorts of applications, including cars and trucks, to heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems, is making a major move to bring out some value. Last week, Johnson Controls announced that it plans to split off its highly successful automobile seating business, either through a spinoff or a sale, or, or maybe a sale of parts of it. This is an initiative that I've been advocating for ages. I even wrote about it in Get Rich Carefully, because auto parts, batteries, and heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems don't necessarily belong under the same roof, and there's some real value being left on the table. Well, let's see what happens. It looks like Johnson Controls agrees with it. The benefits here could be enormous. The, number, the seating business is number one everywhere in the world. Really deserves to be its own company so that it can raise enough capital to maintain its market-leading position, which I know it will. Meanwhile, after a spinoff or a sale, Johnson Controls could use that money to make acquisitions that boost its battery or climate control businesses or to roll out a gigantic buyback on top of its $1.2 billion currently left in its repurchase program. I think this is an extraordinarily transformational move that could get this stock really moving. So let's talk, take a closer look at it, with Alex Malinaroli. He's the chairman and CEO of Johnson Controls. Find out more about this proposed breakup and where his company's headed. Alex, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. We got a break here, sir. Thanks in for that the me. stock is where it was when the deal was announced, but I think the breakup value is substantial. Um, just give, the, uh, give people a sense of how really coveted your car business, your seating business is. Well, I, you, just, you just did a great job of, of introducing the company. We are the leading seating company in the world. But what's most important is we're a leading company in China. Uh, right. So if you look what's happening, we, we've been through the outsourcing wave, North America, Europe. The real opportunities in China and our position in China is something to be coveted. But well, why now? I mean, uh, is it possible that you think it's 17.5 units, a million SARS in this country or uh, where China is that it might be the peak or is there a lot of room for auto too? Well, I, I think there's room. I, I, this is not a timing issue as it relates okay. to the external market. This is really about John's controls. This is about the seating business strategically being able to win. You know, we've looked at our business, we've talked about it. Can we keep the parts together and still be a multi-industrial? And I think as you just look at what we're doing with our business, where we want to go with the remaining Johnson Controls, what the seating business needs in order to be successful, it makes the most sense to make this well, Let's talk about a business that was pretty mundane until Tesla, yeah. but now everyone's talking about it. What can your battery business do? What will that business look like three, four, five years from now? Yeah, well, I'm glad you asked because I, I, I get incredibly frustrated to hear about battery businesses because you there's can lots of them. It, right? Well, this is you. Well, batteries, you. And batteries are us. And if you look at car batteries, we're, we're in one in three cars in the world. We're in starter batteries, start stop batteries, micro hybrid, and hybrid batteries. Uh, but because, I think, because it's sitting inside this conglomerate that's a seating business, people look at it and they look at it as an auto parts story, not as. Uh, a real energy storage play. Yeah, I mean, because like when I look at Solar City and Tesla, all anyone talks about is, well, they, you know, they've got these brilliant batteries and it's going to change the world. If there was a company that could get more money and do more with batteries, it would be Johnson Controls, not them. Yeah, well, I, I'm sure they'll do great. Right. But I, but I, you do, I, but, don't you? You do think that they're pretty good outfit, aren't they? Well, I think they, I think they have great technology. Yeah. I actually, actually, what I really believe is, I believe the market's not ready for what they're what they're doing today, the, the broader market. I do think the market will change, but what's happening is the combustion engine ha just hasn't given up. It's decided it's going to compete with the electric vehicle. Uh, and so as, as you move forward, you're going to see hybridization, you're going to see new powertrains, but it's just going to require more batteries. It's going to require more energy storage applications, not just electric cars right. and not just full hybrids. Do you see that business actually accelerating in growth after years of just kind of just like that? Absolutely. No, I think I think that it not only will accelerate, but it will broaden. It gives us the opportunity, I think, with new platforms to think of our business much more broadly than we've done in the past. Okay. I think that that won't be seen until seating is gone, to be honest. I agree. Well, people look at us because we own that business, and I don't think they know how to value it. No. I've always been trying to figure out that it's like a secret sauce. It yeah. could be worth so much more. Now, how about the uh, – how is residential and, and non-residential doing? Because I know that there's – uh, those are real growth areas in America. It looks like it might be turning overseas. Yeah, well, I think that the residential market has started to come back yeah. over the last couple of years. Unfortunately, we're under, underweighted in that business, so we've been a little slower to the, to our right. competitors. But the commercial market, the institutional market, starting to come back. We're starting to see orders come in, and for us, that's our mainstay. Right, now you have like a, a government, hospitals, but I mean, isn't it time to just, if, if there is, are there skyscrapers coming back, and can you get that business? Well, absolutely, but I, I think we have some product caps, and we have some channel gaps. You, you, you probably noticed that we've, we're uh, disposing of our GWS business, our workplace right, solution saw business. Right, saw that. 
to the largest property owner uh, manager in the world, CBRE. Uh, we also have a strategic relationship with them. I think that we're finding new channels and ways to get to the market. We've also acquired a company that brought channels with it the called ADT. ADTI. And that is apparently doing very well. Incredibly well. One year in, and I think we've integrated that company. Right. And, and then Hitachi, a new technology that's coming from Asia that's, going to, that's really going to be important for the HVAC market that we're going to have a big part of. Okay, now I know uh, when you were on, on Squawk, they asked you about uh, whether it would, this was prompted by an activist. I, I know that I felt that, that you guys would do it when I, you thought it was right. Now, even last quarter, though, I didn't think you thought it was right. And that's why I'm trying to figure out what, what's right. changed. Well, the, the timing of it was really driven by our strategic planning process. Okay. So we, we go through a plan, planning process like everyone does. We start to talk about capital allocation. And, and we got to a decision point that we said, are we willing to make the investments that's required that the seeding organization needed, right. that they wanted in order to grow? We've actually moved capital away from our seeding business into our other businesses. And I think appropriate for our business not necessarily appropriate for the seating business. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't I mean, I felt that when I saw it, I said this could be uh, a li this. I think the stock could go to 60, 65. I'm just saying that because this is something that I, in my breakup value, and get rich carefully. And I, 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 I was a little astonished that it came back. Yeah. But, I mean, maybe this is just, again, because people don't realize the firepower that the company has because it is rooted in all together. I, I do oh. think that's it. You know, I, a, a year and a half ago is when I, when I took over the company, and I can remember at, had a meeting with all of our, our sell-side and buy-side analysts, and they said, what do you want? And I said, two years from now, I'd like to make sure that you're not all auto analysts. And I think part of, the, part of the challenge is that people see us through that lens. The people that follow us, the people that understand us, yes. they understand us from that perspective. You're, you're absolutely right. And so that, I have to tell my story. Yeah, and, you, and I think it's that both stories are going to end up being really, yeah. really fantastic and best of class. All right, that's, that's Alex Malinaroli. He's the chairman and CEO of Johnson Controls. Guys, listen to me. This stock is down from where they announced this opening and valuation creation. And that's really a fantastic opportunity for as early as Monday morning. Mad Money's back into the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.